Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about all the different things for factoring. You can go back and watch these videos that are posted in our Google Classroom because this is basically when we kind of started um, doing videos for coronavirus. All right, so first thing in factoring is the greatest common factor. What can we pull out of all the terms? And that's really how we start any factoring problem. So if I'm looking, we have two terms here. Um, I see I can pull a 5 out of both of those and I can pull an x out of both of those. Now remember, if I pull out the entire term, I need to leave a 1 there. So if I pull out 5x, 5x divided by 5x is 1. And 5x going into 15x cubed would go in 3 times for 5. And there would be 2 x's left over. Now remember, we can always check ourselves by doing 5x times 1 would give me 5x. And 5x times minus 3x squared would give me minus 15x cubed. So you can always check that out when you're doing um, factoring and making sure that you're pulling out the greatest common factor. We should always look after we do the greatest common factor to make sure that we cannot factor that any farther, and in this case we can't because we have two terms with subtraction, but this is not a perfect square. Speaking of perfect squares, if we're doing two terms, that is one of the things we can look at. You'll look at two more things when you are in Algebra 2. But if I can see, okay, there are perfect squares here. So x times x gives me x squared, and 4 times 4 gives me 16. So I make my two sets of parentheses. I'm going to put an x and an x here. I'm going to put a 4 and a 4 here, and 1 plus and 1 minus. I'm not 100% sure if we did difference of squares in this chapter with you guys. If we didn't, just skip this part. If we did, there's your review. Okay, if we have three terms, there's two different ways we talked about doing this. When there's a leading coefficient of 1 here, we can just pop our two parentheses here, and we know that we need an x times an x. And then we say, okay, what are my multiples of 15? Well, I have 1 and 15. 3 and 5, and that's it, okay? Um, and I believe this is not supposed to be a 15, this is supposed to be a 5. I think I just wrote that incorrectly, because that's not factorable. So if we look at 5, we have 1 and 5, and that's really it. Those are the only things that's multiplied to be 5. So we're going to put a 1 and a 5 here. And then if I'm looking at this, x times 5 gives me 5x. 1 times x gives me 1x, which conveniently adds to be 6 if both of these are pluses. So my final answer is x plus 1 times x plus 5. Okay. Not too big of a deal here. Now, if we have a number in front, we can play the guess and check game, but I taught you guys the multiply back method. So we're going to multiply that 2 back. So we're going to have x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then we go about our merry way, just like what we did before. We say x times x multiplies to be x squared. We want something that multiplies to be 2, but adds or subtracts to be 3. Well, the only thing that multiplies by to be 2 is 1 and 2. And if we check this, 2 times x is 2x. 1 times x is x, which, if they're both negative, would become negative 3, and a negative 1 times a negative 2 would become the positive 2 here. So they both have to be negative in this case. Now remember, we have an extra step here. So we had x minus 1 and x minus 2, but because we multiplied that 2 back, we're going to divide each number by 2 and reduce our fraction. So 1 half doesn't reduce, so it's going to stay. 2 over 2 does reduce to be 1. Now remember, when I have a fraction, we don't like fractions when we're factoring, so we just pull that new denominator up to the front of that parenthesis. So if there had been a denominator here, we would have pulled it forward. Since it's just a 1, we don't have to. So this would be 2x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. And if we were to FOIL that out um, or use Bax method, we would get back our x squared, or I'm sorry, our 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay. Last one is if we have four terms. When we have four terms, we do what we call factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. Notice I took that minus sign with me, and there's really a plus between them now. And then I'm going to look at the greatest common factor for the first parenthesis. The greatest common factor would be n, so I'm left with n squared plus 1. The second one here, I notice there's a 4 in common. I'm also noticing that there's a negative in common, so I'm going to factor out that negative, which conveniently would be n squared plus 1. Now, when we do factor by grouping, our whole goal is to get these two parentheses to look exactly the same, because then I can use that as my greatest common factor. And when I factor that out, I'm left with the n minus 4. Now, after I do my factor by grouping, I should always check and make sure that nothing can be factored down farther inside my parentheses. And in this case, it can't because there's not a minus sign here, so it can't possibly be difference of squares. Okay? I hope this video finds you well. Good luck. and. We'll